Hi, my fellow students. Now I am going to start today a new series, and that is on for the man's uh, much anthologized essay that is the resistance to theory. Before we get into the lecture proper, I would like to give you some idea about that and introduction. I will read out the main points and then we will proceed. There should be a method for literary exegesis. Exegesis means interpretation and critical evaluation and also assessment of values. Second point is, the method should take, uh, these points are that we are uh, trying to explain today, not all the important points in this. The method should take you to a stable cognitive field that is truth. Stable cognitive field means a truth. Otherwise, it will take you to delusion. The approaches and methods to understand literature right from Aristotle to T.S. Eliot are ill-defined, chaotic and hard to label movements, including those of the North Americans, a group of them, and Europeans, because these are approaches based on extra-linguistic considerations such as ethical, aesthetic, aesthetic means aesthetic includes style, stylistics, form, allusions, props, means figural language, ideologies, religion, uh, isms such as feminism, Marxism, formalism, tradition and culture and so on. That is pre-1960 so-called theories in Dr. Thomas. He doesn't even, Paul Demon doesn't even recognize the mass theories. Say the, the label theory or the word theory should not be used for approaches to literature from Aristotle to T.S. Eliot. Because T.S. Eliot, of course, he has got a great admiration for him. He says, T.S. Eliot is the perfect embodiment of new criticism. He remains in many respects in the personality of ideology of T.S. Eliot. What? The new criticism. If you know, if you want to define what is new criticism, you will find it in the personality of T.S. Eliot, he says. But still, that is not theory. A combination of ordinary talents, traditional learning, verbal wit, and also moral earnestness. So he admires him. That is, what he says, that is not theory. <laughs> then what is theory? <laughs> That's the point. Now, because pre-1960, the consideration was uh, that the, the, the so-called theories and theoreticians based their studies on extra linguistic considerations underline that extra linguistic considerations what are these extra linguistic considerations that is history then aesthetic that is aesthetic response or very often he uses in this essay you have got the ethical consideration moral values tradition culture politics the political shakespeare recently we have got now that is Dolimor and Seinfeld, political Shakespeare, that they are cultural materials. They are searching for that, not the work as such, but searching for that. Extra linguistic. It's like, see, example, I'll tell you. So this is a pen. I <laughs> got pen I'm using. Now, inside this, there is the essence. What is the essence? Ink. Without ink, it will not work. It is love thinking about that. Instead of taking into consideration the essence of this, okay, the, the stable cognitive field in this, there is truth in this. Suppose I write a five page essay on the color of the cap and then this color of the body of the pen and uh, those things printed here, the some color uh, here, some red color, and then about uh, its beauty and all those things. That is extra linguistic construction. Understand? On the other hand, if you in pre-1960 approaches, the thing is absent. Thing means the work is absent. The the 
product is absent, then what are these people thinking about? They are thinking about ideologies. Just now I gave you an example. Or another example I will give you. Suppose you have got a, a tin full of, uh, full of uh, say, uh, just from factory you have got a tin of compliant. Okay. Now you go on writing essays about the packing, uh, the color there, the pictures given there, and then uh, uses of, uh, I mean, uh, how this has been, that tin has been produced, okay? In what way it has been packed and all that, that is just like extra linguistic consolation. But the thing is absent. What is the thing? The thing is the powder that is inside. So, pre-1960 apologist literature was like this. The thing is absent. But they were talking about isms. So, they are asking. Feminism. This is feminism. They look for feminism there. Or you have got uh, say, things like uh, Shakespeare, I already told you, say the Thessalians, the wasteland. You think for his personal problems. Then world War, the world, first world war. Then allusions. How many allusions are there? From where these allusions have been taken? That is not theory. These are extra linguistic considerations. Form, you say, style, stylistics, it's called aesthetic as well. So, what the main point in this essay is this. What aesthetic response to a work of art, that is a literary discourse, is not theory. If this, it cannot be given the name theory, theory. It cannot be given the label theory. All those things he says they are ill-defined. Searching for this extra linguistics, uh, extra linguistics approaches. These are ill-defined, chaotic, then hard to label moments. In the essay he, he, he gives a list of such people. He says it's the North American Academy. He says you find influential textbooks like Understanding poetry by Brooks and Warren. Then theory of literature by Wellock and, uh, and the Warren. The Fields of Light by Robin Ball. And you have got uh, other very, you can say, critically important books like Academy for the Academic World also, very important books like The Mirror and the Lamp. And the language as gesture. Verbal icon. See, these are not theoreticians and these are not theories. In the post-1960 sense of the word. And then he gives another list there. These names are given in the in the book, in the text. You can go through that. And then he will say another new criticism, T.S. Eliot about T.S. Eliot. T.S. Eliot is the embodiment, but that is not theory. Then you have got a group of Europeans, Crucius, Auerbach, Benedict Croce, Spitzer, Alonso, Valery, and then even Sartre. Sartre, of course, he says partial. Huh? They are not, he is not also a theoretician. The only exception that he finds is Kenneth and the North Rofway. Otherwise, all the names that I have listed, which you can find in the essay itself, you will find, he says that they are not, they are not worth considering as theoreticians. I am referring to these people and their books and their works just because these people and their approaches, they have a negative meaning, right? negative relevance. What is the negative relevance? That they are not theories. When you say negative, black is black because it is not white. Like that, is it? These are not theories. Then naturally, what do you ask? What, are they? what do you mean by theory? That's what I am coming to, says Paul D. Man. Why don't we consider these as theories? Because their approaches right from Aristotle to T.S. Eliot, <laughs> we can say, and also with these Europeans, North American critics, North American Academy, they are based on extra linguistic 
approaches the method wrong method and this extra linguistic approaches will take you to delusion not truth not a stable cognitive field so what have you been doing so far in your literature classes what have you been doing he asks us me also you have been teaching delusion not truth now if we say like this what will happen this will happen traditional practitioners of reading will resist theory they will denounce it so here is the first aspect of resistance to theory i hope if you understand this point that is i do i gave you an example of the tin in which combine is packed and the tin or the pen and the ink inside from aristotle to tsli you put like that they were thinking only about the cap the color the body and so on of this pen not the thing the thing is absent for the thing you require uh, you have to apply the principles of linguistic science theory begins then all the other approaches they are extra linguistic and they will take you only to delusion i think that much is clear so the this uh we have, we have mentioned about the european critics and the north american critics and so on paul deman says that these have the theoretical implication of resistance to theory now why have i spent a lot of uh, my time and space writing about this this so called theoreticians because they have a <coughs> sorry theoretical implication of resistance to theory if i say just i say now i mean sir i am just uh, using that uh, uh, for demand as i and just the same for demand said for demand said so i thought when i say i you should understand it like, like that not myself so when i say or when i give importance to these people or when i mention the names of these people they are approaches and so on it has got a negative impact i want to prove and show you beyond all doubts that these approaches right from aristotle to tsdf this is who he had made quite a lot i have already given you those adjectives and uh, says they are not theories they are not theoreticians uh, for the simple reason that what they have been doing is nothing but uh, they have been studying reading interpreting uh, discourse about literature have been done on the basis of extra linguistic considerations Now what are these extra uh, linguistic considerations here you have got a list of them understand so that so the first point to note that these are not theories because they are based on extra linguistic considerations now once again i will go through this uh, before i conclude today's lecture there should be a method for literary exegesis means a theory and critical evaluation and assessment of value assessment of value should come after reading not before what is what do you, what do you mean by that we will see later lectures the method should take you to a stable cognitive field truth otherwise it will if you as a, if you write about this pen cap and all those things that method or that discourse will not take you to truth <coughs> the truth is hidden like that just give an example only and approaches and methods to understand literature all the approaches and methods to understand literature right from aristotle etc etc are not theories because they are based on extra linguistic considerations so resistance comes from there from where from traditional practitioners of traditional practitioners of the so called theories 
for critical evaluation. Literary exegesis, traditional practitioners of literary exegesis and critical evaluation, they resist theory. I think that point I have tried to explain. If you have got any problem, uh, we will discuss together. Okay, so until then, bye. Have a nice day.